Recently, around 50,000 Pfizer documents were released. So today, we'll be going over the document 5.3.6 that everyone seems to be so concerned about, which is essentially 38 pages of post-marketing surveillance data on vaccine adverse events of special interest. In this video, I'll give you some background on how those documents even became public. Then, I'll break the document 5.3.6 down for you into easier to understand terms than Pfizer did using slides and images I've created for this presentation. Essentially, I'll explain what this document really implies and I'll even cover what you should know about the nine pages of side effects that are getting some serious media coverage right now. But before we begin, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell in the bottom right hand corner so you can be notified when my new videos come out. Also, click my social links in the description below if you want more content like this. I post extra exclusive content on Substack and Patreon if you're interested. Anyways, let's get into this. You need to check out my new Substack post on this. I broke down all the details from this Pfizer document drop into simpler terms. I'll post a link in the description below. Anyways, let me pull up my Substack post so we can go over some important details. One second, hold on. So I want to start this off with some important information. So first, let me highlight this paragraph and these three bullet points right here. Now there's a lot of confusion surrounding this, so I'm going to set the record straight right off the bat. First, understand this. The first nine pages or 1400 different adverse events listed in this document make up a non-exhaustive list of vaccine surveillance data from both the Eastern and Western hemispheres. As a matter of fact, many of the side effects listed in this document were not experienced by anyone in America or even after a COVID vaccination. I'll get to that part in a second. Now look at number two, another important point here, AESIs or adverse events of special interest weren't only experienced after COVID vaccination. This list is actually a compilation of side effects experienced from many other vaccines as well. It's almost like a master list, which brings me to point number three. This list is a conglomerate made with input from many other global health authorities like the Brighton Collaboration, SPEAC, Access Protocol, the US CDC, and the United Kingdom's MHRA. It was put together using data from adverse events they've seen after giving many kinds of vaccinations. So now that the table's been set, let me give you the history behind these documents. Let me scroll down here real quick. Now look at where it says how it began. So there was a freedom of information or FOIA lawsuit started mid last year, but filed early this year against the FDA by a Texas law firm. Essentially, the FDA was overdue to release Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine documents to the public domain, but they kept dragging their feet. So let me scroll further down here. So you can see the court docket was filed on 1622. You can also click the link below to read my full article on this. I've covered this extensively over the past two months. Let me scroll down a little further here. Now, look where it says demands from FOIA lawsuit, Freedom of Information Act lawsuit. Basically, if you look at number two and three, it explains everything you need to know. The FDA responded to the Texas lawsuit through the court and said they could only submit 500 pages of data per month, which then would take 75 years to collect. So a judge said no to that and then ordered the FDA to produce 55,000 pages of vaccine data per month. <laughs> so that's what happened there. After that, the FDA requested to delay delivering the data until May of 2022, but clearly that didn't work out because we have the information now. Let's scroll down further to something very important here. Now, here's another court docket where Pfizer requested the court to allow them to filter certain documents from being released because Pfizer felt certain organizations organizational secrets would be leaked if the public saw them. Again, if you want to learn more about that, click the link here. I've covered this extensively over the past months. Now, Fast forward to March 1st, FDA finally handed over some of the documents and that's why we're about to go over this 5.3.6 that was a part of that document drop. So let me scroll down here to where it says Pfizer vaccine document 5.3.6. If you look at the second yellow area, it's redacted. Look where it says B4. That information was about the number of doses shipped and that would have been helpful to know. Without that though, you can't do any kind of analysis on adverse events. Anyways, just so we're on the same page, this post-marketing surveillance monitored for safety after Pfizer's clinical trial when the vaccines were rolled out to the public. So this data covers safety events that occurred between December 1st, 2020 
through February 28th, 2021. That's about three months. So let's scroll down here, hold on. So as you can see, there were 42,806 reports of adverse events, of which 25,379 were confirmed. And most cases occurred in the United States. So let me scroll down to this graphic real quick. Basically, this image shows that most of the adverse events were generally mild. However, hold on one sec because there's more hidden. Just so it's clear, we're going to go over what I feel are the most important adverse events found in this document. I can't possibly go over every single one or this video would be 40 hours long. So let's scroll to where it says cardiovascular AESIs. Now these were events that were experienced within 21 days after vaccination and as soon as 24 hours after the shot. As you know, there are a lot of cardiac events seen in people with COVID like arrhythmias and even after vaccination like myocarditis, pericarditis. I'll link a Lancet study below. Also, I'll link two recent data sets from Kaiser Permanente as well. Moving on, so there were 1,403 cardiac related adverse events of which 241 were confirmed. Now, that doesn't mean they weren't confirmed at a later time, by the way. They probably were, just not at the time during this data. But anyway, look at this list on the left-hand side, myocardial infarction or heart attack, arrhythmias, which can be lethal rhythms like atrial fibrillation. Also, cardiogenic shock from the heart not perfusing the body with blood, so the body shuts down. POTS, you've seen a lot of that after COVID and now vaccination. Basically, POTS, if you're curious, is an inability of the body to balance the heart rate, especially after standing up too fast. The heart rate can go up to 150, 200 beats per minute. That's not good. Everything I named is not good and could easily put somebody in the hospital for one reason or another. Now, look at the right side of this document. 946 events were serious, most likely requiring hospitalization. So keep in mind, these were cases only reported within a three month period. So there would be more down the line. Now, Pfizer's response to all of the adverse events listed in this document is that they saw no new or elevated safety signals. Uh, but fast forward to current day, we now know that's not the case. We're seeing myocarditis, pericarditis, clotting issues, arrhythmias. Again, these are termed rare events. But anyway, I've definitely treated patients with these issues after they've been vaccinated, sometimes even after they've had COVID. But again, that's anecdotal. But for what it's worth, I figured I'd tell you. Okay, so now let's scroll down to where it says post-marketing cases evaluation of immune mediated autoimmune AESIs. Those are the adverse events of special interest. Starting from the yellow section on the left, I want to draw your attention to where it says cytokine storm and hypersensitivity. Now move your eyes to the right side of the box where it says myocarditis and pericarditis. In three months, there were 32 cases of pericarditis reported, then 25 of myocarditis after vaccination. So how does this relate to a cytokine storm? Well, there's data suggesting cardiac tissue death could be hastened by the inflammatory cascade to pericytes in the heart from increased macrophage activity and increased signaling proteins called cytokines. So that's basically what I mean by cytokine storm. Sadly, that's an example of the body trying to help itself, but overdoing it and hurting itself instead. So there's an immune mediated hypersensitivity where the body inadvertently overreacts. You can't be 100% sure of the direct cause of myocarditis after vaccination or even after COVID, but that's just one of the proposed theories I wanted to bring to your attention. Now, just so we're clear, myocarditis is not mild. A hefty amount of people experience late gadolinium enhancement after the acute phase has resolved, and that can lead to premature death and heart failure later down the line. Do not be fooled by people telling you otherwise. Now, moving on, I want to scroll to the 1400 different side effects. This is a hefty list. But again, as we talked about earlier, all of these are not adverse events experienced after the COVID vaccine necessarily. Don't get me wrong, many of these were experienced after vaccination. However, this is more of a watch list for practicing clinicians like myself, physicians assistants, nurse practitioners, registered nurses, or doctors. So what should you take from all of this? Well, this is old data, but as we know from newer data, there are problems with myocarditis, pericarditis, clotting, and other immune mediated issues that people have after they get the vaccine or even COVID. All of that means we need to remain open-minded about these issues. This should not be something that's politically dividing. We should not be shutting people down because they believe these things don't happen, even though they do. <laughs> science is about open and rigorous debate, not about closed-mindedness. It's sad because I feel science 
has changed in a very bad way over the past two years and it's stopping many positive breakthroughs from occurring because people are afraid to openly communicate about these issues, especially when it comes to vaccines or this virus. Anyways, those are the facts. We still need more data on this, but if there's anything you'd like to learn about in the future, please leave it in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next one.